What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to another session, Lesson on the Right Mindset. Today, we are going to go over organizing your word count and information, part seven of outlining a book series or saga. So why is it important? Well, why focus on numbers in a creative field? Who cares? It's not math. Well, because understanding the quantifiable aspects of your manuscript empowers you as a writer. It's not just about the words you weave, but also about how effectively you manage and structure them. That's right. Tracking word counts and chapters helps you maintain pacing, ensures narrative coherence, and sets a clear path to completion. It's about knowing the skeleton of your work so you can dress it with the flesh of your creative confidence. That's what I'm saying. All right. So, know yourself as a writer. Now, here is the crucial aspect of the writing process that often goes unnoticed but is instrumental in shaping the discipline and structure of your work, keeping track of word count, chapters, and establishing the overall length of your manuscript. Mm. I made a really nice template for you today, so keep keep watching. It's free. You just go to the link. It's going to be great. With that said, this meticulous approach not only provides a tangible framework for your narrative, but also empowers you as a writer to manage your time effectively and set realistic expectations for the completion of your drafts. Now, word count and chapter tracking is uh, pretty much at the heart of this practice and is a discipline that takes time, okay? This is more than mere numerical exercises. It's about understanding the pacing and structure of your story. By keeping a close eye on how many words you dedicate to each chapter, you gain insights into the rhythm of your narrative identifying areas that may need expansion or trimming. This ongoing evaluation helps ensure that each chapter contributes meaningfully to the story, maintaining balance and coherence through your manuscript. Now, beyond the, uh, the immediate scope of chapters and word counts lies the broader vision of your manuscript's uh, overall length. So estimating this early in the process allows you to envision the scale of your project from the number of pages to the depth of content. This foresight is invaluable, not just in terms of plotting and planning, but also in setting personal milestones and deadlines. Okay. Now, before we get into it, I always like to jump on to uh, some uh, strong, helpful tips. But today... We are really going to talk about just a couple of things that we are going to explore, okay? The first thing we're going to explore uh, is we're going to talk about word count uh, in the in the template I made. I, I made a nice sheet that I use myself. Uh, I just cleaned it up uh, so it's more generic instead of specific as it is made for me. Uh, it'll explore word count, outlining. It'll show you how to outline and organize your chapters into the 27 plot point outline. There's a section for history. So I like to keep track of timelines. I like to keep track of how old characters are, especially since I write epic fantasy. I like to see the history of the story unfold. Uh, there's, a, there's a tab for characters and how to organize them. There's locations, species. I call them species. I don't call them races. The reason I do this is because, well, if you're writing fantasy for me, yeah, there's elves, but there's Valis, there's Hamarian, right? There's Minotaur. Those are different species. They aren't necessarily races in my mind. Uh, I don't, like, for example, I don't really agree with the idea that there are multiple races in the human race. There is only the human race, and we are really in a relay. We're handing everything off to the next generations as we continue around the track. Anyway, the other thing is it will allow you to place your names into ABC order. Why is this important? Well, sometimes you might uh, have some crazy names, or you might have uh, or complex names, I should say. And uh, in your book, you might want to have uh, a listing of those characters and how to pronounce their names. So this sort of like keeps it in order as you work it. Now, um, beep, 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 beep. I do want to go over, I'll just give you some information. So 
Uh, word count per page for a trade paperback, okay, which is... Uh, I don't have one nearby, but so a trade paperback typically has around 300 words per page. So why is this important? Well, you know, this is just an average, by the way, though. Uh, the actual number can vary on a few factors from like, you know, font size, spacing, uh, some larger fonts and more line spacing will naturally lead to fewer words per page. Uh, the presence of dialogue obviously will change that, too, because dialogue tends to take up more space on the page than narrative text. So books with a lot of dialogue may have slightly fewer words per page. Also, the trim size will affect it. Uh, and you're saying, well, why dialogue? Well, dialogue uh, doesn't create passage prose, uh, you know, and dialogue might end within a line on the page. So if you're just flying through those lines, it just feed, it eats it up. In romance, uh, you might find that the average words per page is 275 to 325. Again, some fair varying uh, variations on this might be the, the subgenre, such as with sweet romance tend to be shorter, steamy romance a little longer because of the prose. Uh, author style can create dense prose versus light and breezy. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. And of course, the publisher's preferences. Then you have urban fantasy. On average, these uh, will generally fall between 250 and 300 words per page. Uh, again, variations will uh, be based on uh, similar to romance and subgenres like uh, light urban fantasy versus grim and gritty. Author style plays a role. And additionally, the presence of world building elements can influence word count slightly. So let's talk about comparing your numbers. Okay. These are things uh, for you, you know, an essential step in refining your manuscript is to contextualize your chapter lengths and overall word count by comparing them with established norms in the genre. This comparison can be particularly enlightening when writing in genres with well-defined reader expectations, such as epic fantasy, romance, and hermit fantasy. Each of these genres tends to have its own sweet spot for average word count and chapter lengths, influenced by narrative complexity, word building requirements, and pacing preferences. Keep in mind, I'm not saying to write to these specific numbers, or if like the average numbers are there. What I'm saying is in epic fantasy, uh, it's not uncommon to have a slightly heavier chapter uh, filled with more exposition and a little bit more world building than say romance. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. When writing chapters, what makes a complete chapter? I have plenty of videos on that where it talks about what is a beginning, a middle and end. If a chapter feels complete, it's done. If it's uh, 1,500 words or it's 6,000 words, like it's up to you as the writer to determine what you want. However, bear in mind, if you have three or four 1,500-word uh, chapters in a row, pacing's quick. If you have two or three uh, five to 6,000-word chapters in a row, uh, pacing could be kind of slow. So you want to vary, you know, a 1500, maybe a 3000 in epic fantasy, you know, and then maybe you want to do a 6000 and maybe go back down to a 1500 or 2000, right? Like those are the things you should be thinking about when it comes to pacing and the length of your chapters. There is no be all end all to how exactly long a chapter should be. There's just guesstimations. Uh, you know, traditionally you could write a nice standard novel using the 27 plot point outline and make each plot point a chapter. So that's 27 chapters. Each chapter has 3,000 words. That's an 81,000 word book. Done, right? You can do that, but you're you're not beholden to that. However, some publishers, especially uh, uh, publishers that focus on certain genres, will ask for a specific word count range and also based on your online presence and your marketability and your branding this will all uh, adjust what they feel is comfortable in putting money because you know uh if you have a four hundred thousand word first book <laughs> and you're unknown that's a lot of money to print that <laughs> a lot of money anyway so 
if you're if you're wondering though like you know what should i write why should i write it's good to do some research that's why we compare but we don't necessarily define our skill and our talents based on other people and we should not define where our book is compared to other books it's just nice to understand what the industry is how the industry moves and how uh, people play within those because remember the more you understand something the more you can break the rules right so with that said why genre comparison matters audience expectations readers often have subconscious expectations for narrative pacing and book length within their preferred genres meeting these can enhance reader satisfaction and engagement when it comes to market standards understanding the market standards for your genre can aid in aligning your manuscript with publisher expectations increasing its marketability which is basically summarizing what i said and then of course there's structural insights this will comparing your numbers allows you to gauge if your chapters are brief or too brief uh, comp uh more specifically, if they're too brief for complex world building, uh, you know, that is usually expected in epic fantasy. Or perhaps it's too lengthy for the quick paced chapters often favored in romance and urban fantasy. So those are things that uh, you should be aware of. Now, before we move forward to the template, uh, as always, uh, if you have not done so already and you love what you're watching, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. Let's do it. Boop. All right. So I'm going to go over the uh, the sheet. And then I will actually go over the sheet. Okay. So this is word count. Let me get rid of this so you can see the whole sheet. This is word count. All right. The way I do this is if I'm writing, like today, uh, will I record this? It is 420, dude. All right. Okay. So it's 420, 24. Let's say I'm only doing a 60 hour writing session and I just put one. Every day is only one. I just do that because it, it helps with the, uh, with the dividing up uh, the word count average, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just fix this. Okay. So it's always one, but uh, I, I, I just add that whenever I do that. And then you put down whatever your word count is. I, on average, can do 3,000 words in two hours. So I'm just going to say 1,500 words in an hour. Okay. This says that uh, I write about 25 words per minute, which uh, isn't super high and isn't super low. Hey, did you hear that little motorcycle? All right. Now, if, uh, if I wrote tomorrow, I would just go like this. Let's say tomorrow I wrote for 90 minutes. All right. And let's say that made me do uh, 2,300 words. All right. So now, as you can see, uh, I have a total of 150 minutes put into my book. I have worked on it a total of two days. I have total 3,800 words in that time. All right. And my average word count uh, words per day is I'm doing about 1,900 words per writing session. And I'm doing about 20. So it's just nice that it keeps track of this. Why is this important? Why is this important? That's a good question. Here, let me let me make me big. All right. So why is that important to see these numbers? A, it keeps you on track. B, when you decide to write a book, the more you see your numbers coming to life through proactive effort and, or, and, and keeping track of it, you'll be able to guesstimate how quickly you could write a book. That's important when you talk to a publisher or if you get hired to write a book, like I get hired by clients. They ask me how long and I go, it's a mixture between the efforts between both of us. But ultimately, once the writing starts and I and I have to write, this is what I write. OK, so I can also I know how much to charge them, especially if they want to do a package deal. Right. Uh, but it also affects me when it comes to deadlines, because if I understand my numbers, because I physically see them played out. I can average out what it is it's going to take me. Right now, if we look at this based on these numbers, right, uh, I'm going to write about 1,900 words per day, okay? And if I have a, um, let's say, a 100,000 word manuscript that I want to get out, okay? Or let's, since it's epic fantasy, let's go to the max 120, 120,000. 
divided by 1900. I know it's going to take me 63 days. All right. Uh, 63 divided by, uh, let's say 30 ish. So it's going to take me, uh, two, two months, two and a half months. Right. But again, that's a guesstimate. And obviously if I had more data, it'll give me a better idea of what I could write in. Uh, I personally write seven days a week. I will write a minimum of an hour. I will write no more than two hours. All right. Now, writing could entail me organizing information like into this, uh, organizing my plots, uh, thinking about stuff, brainstorming, uh, trying to figure out how to clean up certain things. I don't necessarily have to be writing, writing. Um, so I will not jot down the day I quote unquote wrote if I'm not physically writing my drafts out or my zero drafts. This is only I only use this for when I am physically writing out my chapters. Uh, specifically zero draft, first drafts, uh, zero draft and first draft. Uh, once I get to the second, third, and fourth, I don't, I don't keep track of that. The reason is because uh, the second draft is sort of like I'm going through and I'm like adding little moments here and there. I'm not necessarily writing. I'm more or less reading, uh, 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 editing and, and uh, organizing things in a sense. But the zero draft and the first draft, I keep track of my numbers. Anyway. Right, let's go back. So there you go. Now, I have a little gift for everybody. If you uh, get this, and it's free, you just have to download it. I have, uh, I wrote down a whole bunch of authors, okay, and their books. So here's their books. Here's the author. Here's the word count to the book. Uh, here's the year it was published. Here's how many chapters it has. And then, whoop, whoa, hey, hey. And then I have the average word Look at that, average words per chapter. And then I have, if they have a prologue, the length. Now you're wondering, do you have all the books there? I don't have only uh, the, the most popular, but I do have, if you go down here, I have all. I have a lot of the Sanders books as well for epic fantasy people. I have uh, a lot of people like these books, right? Prince of Thorns series. Uh, then I have the R.R. Martin, and then, of course, a few of the Robert Jordans. Now... I will always be adding to the list to the list so and adjusting the template, et cetera, et cetera. So always be looking for that in the file. Uh, I have the I always date my files so people know when the last time I updated them. For fun, if we look at this, uh, the way of kings is 383,389 words. Okay, that's a pretty heavy book, right? But as you can see, it was print it was made. Woo! 14 years ago. Anyway, there's 75 chapters. And as you can see, for epic fantasy, it's about 5,000 chapters, 5,000 words per chapter. All right. So that's what you're going to see for epic fantasy. But if you look at something like, what do we got here? Yeah, the Forever War, right? This was in 74, as many years ago. It was at 30, 40, 50 years ago, 33 chapters. And it turned out to be 2,500 words. So as you can see, if you base your stuff on something that's 50 years old, it might not be as effective as, say, something that is more contemporary. Uh, let's see. The Rise of the King, for example. The Hobbit. The Hobbit was 95,000 words, right? In 1937, 19 chapters. But look at that. 5,000 average. Right? He was a heavy writer. My point is, uh, this is just nice to see and compare, but I wouldn't judge your own writing on that. All right, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. What's going on here? Okay. Boop. All right. Where are we? Where are we? Hey. Okay. Outline. Boop. All right. Let me back this up a little bit just so you can see the full screen. And I'll go a little bit bigger. Nope, too, too big. All right, there we go. All right. So you can, as you can see, I uh, out, so this is the prologue. There's usually only one chapter in the prologue. All right. So let's look at uh, chapter. Okay. Nice, nice. All right. Um, just for the record, though. Uh, Let's say this is, I don't know if you remember, we're working on this book. Whoop. Welcome to Chicago, 
1946, right? All right. Boop. Okay. Welcome to Chicago, 1946. All right. And then if you remember, uh, so this is the opening scene with Jack, all right? So what I do is opening scene. I write down the hard chapter breaks. Okay. Oh, wait, let's go down here. Uh, opening scene. Three people leave the night. I don't have to worry about that. He follows them to a diner, right? Okay. He follows them to a diner. I like doing this. I like keeping track of that stuff, okay? Uh, it's a soft chapter break. Okay, so now I know that this only has two hard chapter breaks. Boop. And I could just visually look at that. I delete these two. You see how I did that? Very easy. Very easy to do this. All right. Now, this is my notes. Uh, I, how much did I do for the notes? Let's see. Tell me, why'd you have to make things so complicated? Life feels like a joke. Now I'm going to get, my, my channel's going to get uh, barred for putting music on there. All right, uh, let's see. That's a joke. I'm just I'm making a joke. I'm making jokes. All right. Okay. So normally these are just notes. I'll just, I'll just I'll explain. So like, uh, whatever my brainstorming was, I, I'll put that there. So like, let's say I had 50 notes, 50 notes, whatever. But let's look at the zero draft. So we go up here and this is the whole section. So I'll just literally do this. And I'll, 221 words. Boom. So I'll put that 221 words. All right. And then uh, I go to this hard chapter break, and this will take me all the way to the bottom. And that's the whole chapter. And then I go like this. It's 297 words. Boom. 297 words. So there we go. And then once I write the first draft, you know, whatever that ends up being, I'll put that here. Uh, honestly, I could probably get, uh, you know, maybe 1,200, maybe 1,000. Actually, to be honest, this will probably be that. As a first draft, this is where I sort of just get the story out and I just let it kind of uh, function. I don't I don't necessarily worry about deep immersion or like super prose. This is just where I'm getting uh, the uh, the plot out, but nicely. You know, like I'm this dialogue. I'm moving characters around. I'm, I'm I'm creating an atmosphere, but I'm not necessarily too interested in making it pretty. Uh, however, if I end up making it pretty, I don't stop. I'm not like, oh, I can't do this. This is the first trip. No, wherever it goes, it goes. But my purpose is foundational, right? Anyway, you might see this this one. It says guesstimate. What I do here is what I expect to write uh, in a chapter, okay? Now, before I said uh, there should be 3,000 words in a chapter, right? uh on average right you could do that you could do that but if you're writing you might say to you you might look at your book and you go you know i really want to i want to move my stuff around because again if you have if there's three or four chapters in a row that are each three thousand words that could become very monotonous right that could affect the pacing so a lot of times i'll look at what my first draft is and i'll add maybe like half on top of it. So this would be 1500, but here half would be six, seven, eight. So this might be like that. So I might be looking at that. So I usually take uh, whatever it is and I add half uh, to the original number. Um, of course, if you're a heavy writer, if you're into prose and stuff like that, like if this if this was an epic fantasy book, which it's not, where this is a, a noir, right? If it was epic fantasy, I might just double it. So in reality, I would be like, well, this is going to be two thousand words, and this is going to be twenty six hundred words. So that's going to be a forty six hundred word chapter. If I could write up to or around that number, or even lower than that, I know that I'm doing good. So this is where you just sort of set your bound uh, boundaries and everything. You say. Uh, you know, is it too much or is it too little? 
Now, also, as you can see, I have the plot points here. See, I, I mapped out the plot points. I have some notes in there for you. Uh, this will tell you the section total. So if you could see that, uh, see, it does the whole section. So it does all three plot points, right? But this also does all, this is act one. So it'll do section one, section two, and section three, and then all the way down to act two. So it keeps track of everything. So I have it so it keeps track of the acts, uh, the sections, and also the chapter numbers. It lets you know how many, uh, as you can see over here, boop, 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 boop. it'll tell you how many chapters are within the act itself. For now, as a sample, this says 18, which means there are up here, uh, there are 56 chapters total. Okay. So I just made it so it just organizes in the numbers. Now you're saying to yourself, but Tom, what if I have more than two chapters in each plot line, plot point? Because I set it up where there's at least two chapters in each plot point just for you. So you don't have to worry about cut and pasting. But as you can see, I made it user friendly. So let's say we wanted three chapters in the first plot point. First you do is uh, you go to you go to the, the line below the gray. Okay. And then you go to the line below the other gray and then you uh, insert rows below boom okay then you just do this you just take this boop, like that and boom and then i usually what i do is i'll delete the extra line just like that all right and there you go so now i have three chapters boop. okay if you want to add uh more um plot points i just i mean uh which one call it uh, hard chapter breaks. I just do that. Then I copy the line completely and I go like that. Okay. And the reason I do that is it just keeps it all neat and smooth. But if you notice, I, I have it already defaulted at four because if you're, if you have more than four uh, hard chapter breaks in a chapter, you might be getting into crazy territory, meaning like uh, that chapter might be overwhelming. The only time it would make functional sense is if you're writing like a war scene, like a battle, or a, or a lot is going on that is a lot in a moment and not necessarily a whole bunch of moments, right? What that means, you know, in a war, you're following different characters in a moment. So now you could jump around the battlefield and look at each person and the hard chapter breaks, make it a little easier instead of giving a chapter to every character, especially if it's just small little moments, right? Uh, but if it's seven or eight locations and they're all doing something completely different like one is on a date one is fighting somebody one is farming you might you might be outside the realm of uh making sense anyway but as you can see up here it gives you the total all right it gives you the total uh see where it says zero draft but it gives you the total but over here as you can see uh, the numbers behind, like underneath, I mean, tell you what the average uh, word count per chapter is going to be. As you can see, if this was my average word count, uh, if uh, 173,350 words in this book manuscript, it would average uh, 3,000. So the only thing you have to put in numbers in are, are these areas are within the chapters. All right. Anyway, so that's the basic idea of this uh, thing. However, let's move on to history. As you can see, boop, uh, you just set the year, whatever the year is in the story, the month, the day, the time, and then whatever the event is. And then, uh, you can just write that in there nice. If you want to put your characters, again, I write species because, you know, if you have elves, uh, minotaurs, if uh, you don't, and it, I, this might be moot. But, uh, you know, you could put, uh, you know, uh, Mike Ransom, okay? There he goes. He's, uh, he's an elf. Okay? Uh, he's uh, 250 years old. Uh, you can put, uh, I have gender in there as an option. doesn't matter. Uh, you know, height. Uh, let's, let's put him at uh, five, uh, three, okay? Uh, weight, uh, you know, he's an elf, so he's 98 pounds. Hair. Let's say he's blonde, eyes uh, purple. All right, there you go. 
And then there's notes. Oh, let me... and you can write notes down. You can be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mike is a weird elf. There you go. He's a weird elf. All right. Um, anyway. Locations. All right. This is good, too. So you could be like um, uh, New York. What is that? That's a uh, city. All right. Any notes? Uh, yeah. You can't live here without going broke. <laughs> Is it so expensive? All right. Okay. Uh, species. Now, the reason I have this is again, if you're writing fantasy or your book has multiple fantasies, you'd be like uh, elf. You know. Oh, clad is like a subcategory. So this would be like the main, like elves, elves, and then maybe it's like a, a mountain elf. All right. And then anyway, and then you write some. Uh, uh, which one call it? One second. Boop, 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 ba -doop, boop, boom, boop, doop, doop. You might write some notes like uh, elves in general are uh, uh, filled with uh, spry. Spry? Spry. No. Uh, filled with uh, uh, joy. Okay. Uh, mountain elves. Uh, they hide in the mountains. Right? You can write whatever you want. Anyway. And then names. So the names, all right, so this gets a little fun because uh, you could write if it's a male name, a female name, both, if it could be used. And then if you're using the name or not using the name. And why is that important? Because uh, Jeff, uh, Melissa, uh, Christina, uh, uh, Bay Meyer, Meyer. Okay. All right. Well, let's just put that together. Meyer. Baymeyer. Anyway, right? Uh, Dellen. All right. Okay. Whatever. And then you could just go up here and you could hit, uh, boop, and it automatically puts it in alphabetical order and everybody stays, right? And then how you pronounce the name, right? So it's Baymeyer. Right? And this could be male. Uh, well, if I want it to be, look, it could be both. And I put the number just because I, it lets me know how many uh, names I have uh, available for use. I'm not using this one. So there you go. Anyway, very simple. Okay. That's it. We, we figured that out. That was pretty quick. All right. Final thoughts. <sighs> As we conclude this uh, this lesson on structuring your series uh, and understanding yourself as a writer uh, through uh, organizing your numbers and information, remember that today's exploration into tracking word counts, estimating manuscript lengths, and understanding chapter dynamics is more than just a lesson in organization. It's a deep dive into the discipline of writing. This lesson reminds us that writing at its core is an art form guided by the principles of structure and precision. By embracing the metrics of our craft, word counts, chapter lengths, and manuscript estimates, we empower ourselves to navigate the vast seas of our imagination with purpose and direction. These quantifiable aspects of writing serves as a beacon. Uh, ensuring that our narrative journey remains uh, on course, balanced, and uh, engaging for our readers. But beyond the numbers and the planning lies the essence of who we are as storytellers. Knowing yourself as a writer is about recognizing your unique pace, your rhythm, and how you breathe life into the skeletons of your outlines. It's about understanding that while the framework of our stories may be uniformed and informed by industry standards uh, and reader expectation, the soul of our narrative is uniquely ours. All right. As you move forward, armed with the knowledge and strategies we've discussed, remember that the true art of writing lies in the delicate balance between structure and creativity. It's about knowing when to adhere to the guidelines and when to let your narrative spirit soar with its intricacies and vast landscapes. I'm just saying. Anyway, so dear writer, as we part today, 
take with you not only the practical tools and insights from this lesson, but also the deeper understanding of your unique voice and path in the world of storytelling. Now remember, uh, it's all about fun. Next video in the series, we will actually uh, be talking about organizing information into the plot uh, and character appearances, etc., etc. I'm actually going to show you uh, how I keep track of everything. So I, I have another uh, uh, sheet. And I, I will show you that sheet, and it will be available at the time of that video. Anyway, question. How do you balance staying true to your unique storytelling style while also considering genre expectations for chapter length and overall word count? Let me know in the comments below because I really want to know, have you found any creative strategies or face challenges in aligning your narrative with genre norms? Because we all want to know. Call to action. If you've not done so already and you're like, wow, I like this guy's beard, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. As I've stated, I will be going back to live videos on Saturday. Uh, I'm looking at actually. Let me look at my schedule. Let me look at the schedule. My 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 projected schedule is saying that I should be going live uh, July sixth. July sixth should be the first live back video. I really want to get back to it, but I'm trying to do a whole cluster of uh, backlog. And then I, I can focus on all that stuff. Anyway, uh, as always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. I love you.